Bag valve mask ventilation can be done with one person or two. In both cases, successful ventilation depends on three things, a patent airway, an adequate mask seal, and proper ventilation. A patent airway is achieved by inserting an oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airway. To do the one-person technique, hold the mask in your dominant hand. The web space between your thumb and index finger should be wrapped around the connector stem. Lower the mask onto the patient's face. First place the nasal portion of the mask over the nose, and then lower the body over the patient's mouth. The bridge of the nose, the two malar eminences, and the mandibular alveolar ridge must be covered by the mask in order to achieve a proper seal. Make sure you do not place your hands or the mask on the patient's eyes. Doing so may damage the eyes or cause a vagal reaction. Place your middle, ring, and little fingers under the patient's mandible and pull it upwards into the mask. This maneuver is similar to that of the head tilt chin lift technique and it further opens the airway. While these fingers maintain upward traction on the mandible, the thumb and index finger hold the mask tightly to the face and ensure a proper mask seal. If your hands are large enough, your little finger may be placed behind the mandible and do a jaw thrust maneuver to further open the airway. Be sure to pull up only on the bony parts of the mandible. Pressure to the soft tissues of the neck may obstruct the airway. Once a good seal has been achieved, begin to ventilate the patient. In most cases, the ventilatory rate should not exceed 10 to 12 breaths per minute. Use a tidal volume just large enough to cause the chest to rise. Two-person bag mask ventilation is easier and more effective than the one-person method and should be done if possible. In this technique, one clinician maintains a proper mask seal while the second clinician squeezes the bag. The more experienced clinician should handle the mask because this is the most difficult part. The first clinician holds the mask in a fashion similar to the one-person technique. The web spaces of the thumbs and the index fingers are placed adjacent to the connector stem, and the mask is lowered onto the patient's face, nasal portion first. The middle, ring, and little fingers are placed under the mandible and pull it upwards. The thumbs and index fingers hold pressure along the superior and inferior portions of the mask. Once a proper seal is achieved, the second clinician attaches the bag to the mask and begins ventilation. Note that the first clinician may provide a head tilt and a jaw thrust maneuver while holding the mask onto the patient's face. Observe for proper chest rise during ventilations. An alternative method can be used in which the stronger thenar eminences hold the mask to the face. The first clinician puts the base of his thumbs parallel to each other along the lateral edges of the mask. The mask is then lowered onto the face and the fingers are placed under the mandible. The mask is pressed to the face with the thenar eminences while the fingers pull the mandible upwards. Chin lift and jaw thrust may be applied concurrently. This technique is easier to perform, allows the use of stronger hand muscles to maintain a proper seal, which minimizes fatigue, and enables four fingers rather than three to do the chin lift and jaw thrust. Mm -hmm.